And I can tell you how much hate I have received on social media. I can read it into the record, how many emails I have received, how many phone calls, people calling me and telling me that I'm so a f Whoa. Welcome back to Northern Perspective, everyone. I'm Cypher. And I'm Fox. We're back to the Ethics Committee to hear testimony from nobody. That's right, nobody. And they didn't get to meet on anything either. Why are we doing a video then, you ask? Well, it's not often, and maybe never actually, that somebody drops both the F word and the C word in the middle of committee. Let's take a look. Now, Mr. Baines, when we left, you, you uh, raised your hand on a question of privilege. I'm going to allow you to state uh, what you believe the uh, question of privilege is. Um, and if you want to go ahead, go ahead. Thank you. Um, yeah, so as I stated, um, I'm raising the question of privilege with regards to statements made last week in committee, and I wanted to respond to some of the accusations that have been made um, in the committee, and uh, I'd like for the committee to sort of decide if we can, if it should go to the Speaker of the House. So, page 57 of the third edition of the House of Commons Procedure and Practice describes parliamentary privilege as the rights and immunities that are deemed necessary for the House of Commons as an institution and its members as representatives of the electorate to fulfill their functions. Page 88 outlines that, quote, members individually have the responsibility to not abuse their rights and immunities particularly freedom of speech, end quote. On page 112, there's a quote from Speaker Fraser in 1987. Quote, the privileges are of a member are violated by any action which might impede him or her in the fulfillment of his or her duties and functions. It is obvious that the unjust damaging of a reputation could constitute such an impediment, end quote. Furthermore, Mr. Chair, on page 619, it states that, quote, remarks which questions a member's integrity, honesty, or character are not in order. A member will be requested to withdraw off offense remarks, allegations, or accusations of impropriety directed towards another member, end quote. During our last meeting, Mr. Brock made false claims and allegations of collusion towards me in an effort to intimidate and bully me to impede my work as a member of parliament. This raises a, to a prima facie, facie case of intimidation and threat to my reputation. So there's a lot wrong with what he just said. What he did say was he's raising a point of privilege. Every member has a right to do that. Um, the curious thing is they have a duty to do that um, as soon as they become aware of it. So it's curious that this is happening a week later. So if he was so perturbed by this at committee last week, he, he, he should have raised this before then, which is interesting. And where should he have raised that? He should have raised it in parliament. Yeah, in the house, not in committee. So it's very bizarre that they're doing this. The only reason they could, should, uh, could be doing this is to filibuster. So... If you want my opinion, I think that they may be doing it because they know the cameras are rolling and they know that channels like Northern Perspective cover these types of committee meetings. <laughs> the problem is, is channels like Northern Perspective are covering these. <laughs> we, we don't put up with misinformation and garbage. So the, the next thing that he said was um, that because Mr. Brock, and by the way, this is not in the committee records, so... If Mr. Brock said anything, it wasn't on a, on a hot mic. Anyway, um, what he said is, well, you know, because Mr. Brock uh, said that I was colluding and he was referring to a situation, of, you know, during the campaign when he was running against Mr. Chu and, and, and Baines ended up winning, uh, despite the fact that Chu was um, 
being interfered with by the People's Republic of China. He's saying that Brock saying that he was colluding violated his parliamentary privilege. And then he goes on to say, this rises to a prima facie case. Well, you don't get to actually say that. That's opinion. And he also said Brock was bullying him. That's opinion. That's not a fact. Because Brock may think, um, no, this is absolutely something that I hold true. So, like, he, he can't just... <laughs> he can't just outright start making, you know, stating his opinion. That's not what a question of privilege is for. A but question of privilege is for the facts. And the MP cannot decide what is prima facie or or not. I mean, that's up to the Speaker of the House, rightfully, because, again, this should be done in the House of Commons. As far as we understand, it is not proper procedure to bring this up in committee. Right, because it has to go back to the House anyway. The, the chair can't rule on whether something is a question of privilege or not. That's, that's not their job. In 2021, I was approached by members of the community and encouraged to run for office. And I'm very honored to be representing the people of Steveson Richmond East. I stood for office to speak to my values and my vision for Canada. I was elected by the community where I've lived in my entire life because they know me and they trust me and they know I can represent them here in Canada's parliament. Okay, so now this has turned into grandstanding and a sales pitch because again, when you are arguing a question of privilege, you are stating what happened, how it impeded your, your parliamentary duty because by definition, a question of privilege is um, stating that something happened that prevented you from effectively executing your role as a parliamentarian. And then what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to cite sources and, and bring evidence as to why that's the case. You don't say, well, I'm a great guy in my community and people trust me. What does that have to do with Brock saying you colluded? Yeah, if you contrast what Mr. Baines is saying to what Rachel Thomas had said back at the beginning of the month, she brought in the evidence, which was the Hansard Blues, and she described exactly what happened. She didn't say, well, you know, I'm a great MP. Um, I represent my constituents. Well, she didn't say any of that. No, it was bare facts. But... Um uh, I, I, you know, Fox and I think there's a, a, a good reason why Mr. Baines is, is trying to do this. And uh, here's the reason right here. So under the new boundaries, this is Parm Baines writing. <laughs> As it sits currently, Mr. Baines has a less than 1% chance of retaining his seat. And um, we all saw the landslide victory that Jamil Giovanni won in Durham. This is close as the polls are sitting right now. That's a 23% lead. That's a massive lead. So no doubt Mr. Baines is looking for some way to, you know, do a sales pitch to Canadians. And to Fox's point, well, maybe this is why he's doing it in committee because he figures that people are going to be watching since ethics is one of the prime committees that people follow. But, um, he goes on and on and on for like 10, 15 more minutes. You don't have to watch that because it's completely irrelevant and it's ridiculous. What you do get to see is how the chair finally has had enough of this. Mr. O'Toole's recent claims of interference by the government in China contributing to him being ousted as a leader of the Conservative Party. Mr. O'Toole even purports that CBC member and former member of the CPC National Council, Bert Chen, who was suspended from the party's national council after launching the petition to recall O'Toole as a leader was involved. It gets worse. More than 100 Iranian Canadians sent a letter to Conservative leader Pierre Polyev on Tuesday calling for an investigation of the party's handling of allegations. Mr. 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 Baines. Point of order, Chair. Can I just... Point of order, Chair. Okay. We're going to go on your point of order, and then I'm going to come back to Mr. Baines. So go ahead. So in, in the... In the meandering uh, offering of uh, Mr. Baines, he's he's talking about things that have actually occurred since the meeting where he claims that the offense against his privilege was taken. <clears throat> so this is this is. Uh, I believe it's very, all relevant. Well, very very much, I, and I'm and I'm sure he believes it's relevant. But chair, I'm not um, sure which. Uh, 
uh, got... specifically which point of order he's referring to um, from the standing orders chair. Take note that Ikra Khalid, or Khalid as she refers to herself, interrupted Mr. Barrett on a point of order. Just file that in your brain. She interrupted him. Now, um, Mr. Barrett is calling out <laughs> Parm Baines. I'm like, dude, what are you talking about? Because one of the things that he, you know, two things that he said at the end there, and that accompanied a whole bunch of more things that he talked about, is he started talking about things that had nothing to do with his privilege. And all it was is an attempt to smear the conservatives about events that allegedly happened after this meeting. So they have literally nothing to do with this point of privilege. And he's being called, well, I think they're, well, how? How, how does Iranian sending email to Pierre Polyev have anything to do with Brock saying that you colluded? <laughs> like, this is ridiculous. This whole situation is ridiculous, and I'm going to tell you why exactly. This is taken directly from the rcommons.ca website regarding procedure for dealing with matters of privilege. Unlike the speaker... The chair of a committee does not have the power to censure disorder and decide questions of privilege. Should a member wish to raise a question of privilege in committee or should some event occur in committee which appears to be a breach of privilege or contempt, the chair of the committee will recognize the member and hear the question of privilege or, in the case of some incident, suggest that the committee deal with the matter. The chair, however, has no authority to rule that a breach of privilege or contempt has occurred. The role of the chair in such instances is to determine whether the matter raised does in fact touch on privilege and is not a point of order, a grievance, or a matter of debate. If the chair is of the opinion that the member's interjection deals with a point of order, a grievance, or a matter of debate, or that the incident is within the powers of the committee to deal with, the chair will rule accordingly giving reasons. The committee cannot then consider the matter further as a question of privilege. Should a member disagree with the chair's decision, the member can appeal the decision to the committee. In essence, move a motion, shall the decision of the chair be sustained? The committee may sustain or overturn the chair's decision. If, in the opinion of the chair, the issue raised relates to privilege, or if an appeal should overturn a chair's decision that it does not touch on privilege, the committee can proceed to the consideration of a report on the matter to the House. So what does all that mean? It basically means that there's really no point in bringing this to committee. And in fact, there's even less chance that this reaches the threshold of a question of privilege because all that the chair can do is decide, is this nearing a point of privilege? Is it, is it close to it? And if it is, then the committee essentially decides, does this go to the house or not? That's it. And then it has to be presented to the speaker like any other question of privilege. So this is actually just literally wasting time. Re relevance is the first thing, Chair. I, 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 so I, on a I, question of privilege, so, Chair. Sir, has the floor, Chair. So, Ms. Khalid, can you hang on, please? Go ahead, Mr. Barrett. I, I think I've got your point, and I actually I actually and got on the microphone almost at the same time that you the, did. The so. Speaker of the House, Chair, yeah. has also, uh, in practice, limited the length of time for questions of privilege raised in the chamber. And yeah. uh, and and having That's done the, that, yeah. the 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 okay. scope that members offering their points has to be very tight mm -hmm. or um, speakers, the deputy speaker and the assistant deputy speakers have sat members down okay. when they've turned into uh, I'll a soapbox. I've, I've, so I've got that point, uh, Mr. Barrett. And, and I'll tighten it up, Mr. 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 Baines, uh, I was going to make this point yeah. that your question of privilege needs to relate to the issue of you feeling like your privilege has been has been breached. Um, I am just the, the, giving the a comparison here. Th 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 that's fine, yeah. but in relation <laughs> to to what you're talking about, then it has to it has to be germane to that. Okay. What I'm not looking for uh, in making my ruling of whether your privilege or whether I think your privilege has has been breached is to relitigate the issues Noted. that have been before this committee in the past. And I will remind you, sir, that. 
Mr. Chu's uh, testimony is a matter of privilege. He's covered by parliamentary privilege in this room. So I'm going to ask you to keep it succinct as it relates to you feeling like your privilege has been breached, not to relitigate or debate uh, what's happened either in the past or uh, in this uh, committee uh, with witnesses. So please go ahead, sir. If you can be succinct and wrap it up, I would appreciate that. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and, and I will. I'm, I'm almost there. So uh, as, as I indicated, um, I was just showing a comparison of, of some of the points that have been raised here um, and, and are uh, chosen to be um, viewed differently if, it, if it's one side of the equation here versus the other. So I, I, I just was raising some of those uh, issues as a comparison to really shed light on you know, what takes place here and, and how I am feeling. Facts don't care about your... Feelings! Yay! Thank you, Mr. Shapiro. Like, this is not about opinion. It's not about feelings. It's about... It's about, did, did this actually violate your parliamentary privilege? Get to it. Uh, I just feel neither Mr. Brock nor any of the other CPC MPs seem to treat these claims with certainty. Uh, that point of order, Chair. <coughs> Go ahead again on your uh, point of order. Uh, again, Chair. with respect to your ruling, Chair, yeah. uh, requesting that the member um, be succinct and speak okay. exactly to how his privileges were breached. What he's offering is opinion on mm -hmm. uh, perceptions of members of another party about um, issues in, in the news. I, yeah. I, I fail to see how what I think about something or how I treat something, like, for example, um, foreign interference, um, how that has anything to do with his claims that another member of this committee or that his privileges were breached. If he has a specific allegation with Mr. respect... Mr. Brock made with, accusations with, with, against with, me. I'm Chair, speaking to that. I, I'm not asking for okay. cross-discussion uh, here, if, please. If, if, the member, if the member has something specific up. that yep. relates to his privilege being breached, he should cite the event cite the evidence, and then the chair needs to make a ruling. But what this, this yeah. is, chair, this is gratuitous at yeah. best. So, uh, Mr. Baines, Mr. Barrett does bring up a good point. Yes, he does, as Mr. Barrett often does. Like, he's, he's a sharp guy, man. He's really sharp. And I'm not saying that because he's conservative. He's a really sharp guy. Yeah, he's awesome. Um, and, uh, you know, we've seen him tangle with, uh, with Khalid before, uh, before. I have the floor, I have the floor, and I have the floor. <laughs> that was a great video. That was great. Um, and he's calling it out. He's calling it out exactly as, as we're calling it. Like, dude, land the plane, get rid of the diatribe, and if you actually have a point to make, if you have an argument to make as it relates to your point of privilege, then make it. Otherwise, be quiet. Uh, we are all experienced members of Parliament. We have seen questions of privileges uh, being raised in the House of Commons. Uh, in fact, I have raised several questions of privileges in my experience as a House leader. Uh, most of those, many of those, all of those questions of privileges are related to how the privileges of members have been breached. There's very specific references to not just the historical context, but also under the Green Book, how those, how those privileges have been breached. Never have I stood in the House on a question of privilege and litigated what's gone on, uh, either at this committee or what's been the subject of news sources outside of this committee. So I am going to ask you to... Uh, to I will conclude. To conclude. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Baines. So Mr. Baines has concluded his discussion. No, no, no. I will, okay. I will give you Sorry, a conclusion my, here. My misunderstanding. Uh, but I'm going to ask you to wrap it up yeah, real quick. I'll wrap and, it up. And I'll if there's up. another intervention, then uh, by myself, uh, then... I'll speak to, to... So I believe I've already made several references to the accusations, allegations made by Mr. Brock. Uh, so to conclude, Mr. Brock's motion is clearly designed as a personal threat. It's intended to inflict reputational damage, intimidate me using false or unverifiable information designed to impede me in my role as a member of the House of Commons, making statements 
against members without evidence or making false allegations is a matter of serious concern for all members, and I look forward to your ruling, Mr. Chair. I have heard uh, the information that's been provided by uh, Mr. Baines. Uh, I will advise the committee that the chair takes very seriously these issues of, of question of privilege. Uh, similarly to what the Speaker of the House has done, uh, I will take the information. I am going to go back and discuss this with the clerk and come back with a later ruling. Sound reasonable to you, Fox? Absolutely. Why does that sound reasonable to you? Because of that thing I just read. And, you know, he needs some time to carefully consider what was said, what evidence was provided, and then he can come back and, you know, fairly say this is what's happening. Now, Broussard is not just going to go and sit in a room. He's going to con uh, consult with the clerk of the committee, probably some law clerks and other parliamentary staff, so they can advise him. Well, yeah, of course, because Mr. Broussard is conservative, so he goes based on facts, not feelings. Right. So, seems reasonable to us, but it's not so reasonable to the Liberal Party. Um, so that's what I'm prepared to do at this point, okay? So thank you for raising that, Mr. Baines. So, um... I'm sorry, just seeking clarification, Chair. Uh, yeah. What does that mean? It means I'm going to come back with a ruling on the question of privilege. Once I look at all, the, all of the information that's been presented by Mr. Baines, uh, other information as it relates to what's in the book and uh, some of the discussion that went on in the past. Do you mean in a few minutes? He has to come back now. So whenever the clerk of the committee who knows the most about the procedures and processes within committee, and this clerk, she is very, very, very good. Um, what the clerk will do is will lean in as to not embarrass the chair and advise him of, you know, either something he should do, something he should say, or something he should retract. So she's just, you know, guiding him through the processes and procedures to ensure that the chair is acting in accordance with parliamentary process. And so just uh, just for clarity as well, that it's not uh, it's not me that is going to determine whether there is a, a question of privilege here. It's only the speaker that can decide that. Uh, what will happen once I come back and determine uh, whether, in fact, I believe that a question of privilege uh, is, uh, is necessitated here is that uh, there, there would be a motion of the committee to proceed and, and prepare this for the Speaker of the House. So that's how the process would work, okay? So, so at this point, uh, I am not prepared to make a ruling. I'm gonna go back and deliberate with the clerk, and I will come back to, to the committee, not within the time period that's prescribed here, but at a later date as well. Chair. So if you have a point of order, go ahead, uh, Ms. Khalid. Thanks, Chair. Um, my understanding uh, from uh, the Green Book and from our standing orders, um, is that the role of the chair in such instances is to determine whether the matter raised does in fact touch on privilege and is not a point of order, a grievance, or a matter of debate. If the chair is of the opinion that the member's interjection deals with a point of order, a grievance, or a matter of debate, or that uh, the incident is within the powers of the committee to deal with, the chair will rule accordingly, uh, giving reasons. The committee cannot then consider the matter a further as a question of privilege. Should a member disagree with the chair's decision, the member can appeal the decision to the committee, like for example, moving a motion um, or sustaining the decision of the chair, for example. Um, the committee can then sustain that, that decision. So I, I really would um, encourage that we can come to a conclusion on this sooner rather than later, Chair, uh, as is the precedent set by, um, by previous chairs. So that's exactly what I had read earlier. Right, and you know what it doesn't say in there? It doesn't say that they have to make the ruling on the spot. No, it doesn't. So that's, that's what comes under what's called chair's prerogative, meaning the chair has the ability to conduct his committee the way he sees fit. And why would you not want someone to take that back and be able to do that? Do you know why the Liberals want that? Because so, they want to, well, they want Mr. Broussard to say, no, it's not a matter of privilege. And then they want to overturn his ruling. Yeah, and then they want to jump up and down and make a whole big thing, a uh, big stink of it. Yeah, I think this is theater more than anything. It sure is. And the, and the chair isn't having it. Okay, I appreciate that. I appreciate the information that, uh, that you have provided. Uh, but it also is, it's also my understanding, Ms. Khalid, uh, and I've confirmed this, that I can take my time 
to deliberate on this issue, and that is what I am prepared to do, uh, given the seriousness of what Mr. Baines has brought up. So I don't have to make a decision right away. Uh, that's very clear to me, and I'm not prepared to make a decision at this point. I'm going to come back to the committee in due course after I consult with the clerk, and uh, as I indicated earlier, that will not be today. So that's, that's my decision. Mr. Thanks. Chair, point of order? On a point of order. Go ahead. Uh, uh, I, would, I would ask you to consult with the clerk as to whether you have the right to go away and make a decision on this. This, uh, according to the Green Book, has to be made as a decision today so that Mr. Baines can or will or will not be able to move a motion. No, it does not say that you have to make it today. It does not. It sounds like they want it made today so that Mr. Baines can move a motion. Yeah, they want they want to put all kinds of pressure on Broussard right now to decide this today. And uh, just watch what happens. Mr. Mr. Fisher has yeah. the floor. Um, Based on what... Uh, I, I am pretty sure that I've already looked into this. <laughs> and I am certain that uh, no decision has to be made today that I can actually come back to the committee. I'm certain of that, Mr. Fisher. So uh, go on the same point of order. Go ahead, uh, Ms. Um, Khalid. If we can just perhaps have a decision as to whether or not this matter presented to you is, uh, is a matter of privilege or not, and then you can rule on it uh, at a later time. Like, listen to how ridiculous she sounds. Well, if you can just decide whether it's a, a, a question of privilege, then you can go away and then rule whether it's a question of privilege. That's the dumbest thing I've heard all night. Yep. A and I've seen this committee in full already. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> right? So, um, but tell me the liberals don't have an agenda here. Right? Like, Fox is absolutely spot on. They wanted to, 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 to move a motion so they can just destroy the rest of this committee. Well, uh, herein lies the difficulty. As I explained earlier, I, I am not sure whether it actually constitutes a matter of privilege. Uh, and I think it would I think it's unfair of me of that expectation to be placed on me when we deal with questions of privilege in the house Oftentimes the speaker will bring information back will go back and seek information either by the clerk or the law clerks uh, In determining whether it's a question of privilege or not. So if you're you're asking me to make a decision today I think uh, first and foremost hang on uh, first and foremost. I don't have to make that decision Secondly, I can go back and consult with the clerk and others on whether, in fact, I believe this is a question of privilege. If I do believe that, then I come back to the committee, I make that decision, and the committee can move forward in a proper manner. If I decide that it's not a question of privilege, then the committee can move back in a proper, in a proper format and matter. I am not prepared at this point, nor do I believe I have to be prepared to decide on the question of privilege that Mr. Baines has raised. Go ahead, Mr. Fisher. Thank you. This just illustrates why it is so imperative you have an impartial chair on committee. And as we said before, when it comes to Fergus and the speaker, this is where they get their experience in making these decisions in committee, where it's less impactful than making a decision on the floor of the House of Commons. So, like, it is not unreasonable for the chair to say, um, I want to take some time to take a look at this to make sure I get it right. I don't have to make a decision today. Stop pushing. Thank you, Chair, and you are right. You, you aren't uh, asked to judge whether this is a point of privilege. You're not judged. You're not asked to come back at a later date to determine whether this is a point of privilege. You are, however, for the asked purposes of to determine today whether it is touches on privilege. That's all the chair's well, role is, is whether this touches on um, yeah. And I think, I think I've already explained myself in that regard. I realize uh, whether in, uh, exactly what you're saying is what I realize and what I understand. You can see Broussard just getting more and more red because <laughs> he's just like, I'm not having this. Well, they're all adults sitting in that room and he's explained to them very clearly multiple times. I am going to take this away. I am going to investigate and then I will make my ruling because I want to do this correctly. Yeah, and I I have I don't know if I could have remained that calm in in committee in his place. I I I, I don't think I could. So I I commend the man. Go ahead, Miss Khalid. Uh, thank you, Chair. Page six hundred and twenty-three uh, of the uh, of the book. 
Um, proceedings of the House are based on a long-standing tradition of respect for the integrity of all members. So, thus, the use of uh, offensive, provocative, or threatening language in the House is strictly provision. Personal attacks, insults, and obscenities are not in order. And I think that... Um, Based on based on what I've heard today, that is exactly thank rules you. that have been broken. Okay, thank so, you. Thank Chair, you, Mr. I, Barrett. I challenge your ruling. He didn't make a ruling. I haven't. He did. He did. He did. I made a. I'm, <laughs> Poor Mr. Broussard looks so confused. He's like, I, I haven't even made a ruling. What are you trying to challenge? Yeah, he's like, what? There's nothing to challenge. Like, what's wrong with you? She's th she is pushing hard for for that liberal agenda today. Oh man! And, and seriously, Mr. Broussard must have the patience of a saint. Oh, hold, hold on a sec. Hold on a sec. I, I my ruling my ruling is that I am going to come back to the committee, which I think is the prudent and pragmatic thing to do. Uh, you're challenging my ruling on coming back to the committee so that I can look at this in a fair. Uh, fair manner <laughs> and make a proper decision. Is that is that what you're challenging me on, Miss Khalid? Seriously? You know, when he breaks it down like that, it sounds absolutely absurd. Yeah, and that's because it is. Well, exactly. <laughs> and and you heard her trying to interrupt him over and over again as he's trying to explain to her what's going on here and he's just incredulous i am challenging the integrity uh and and what decisions have been made how much abuse members of uh of this committee have taken well that's, uh, based that's subject, on the actions to, that's subject of, to your uh, opinion and uh, I think it is not subject to opinion chair that's the it, whole point it, of it it is that is what the green but it's book not that your is what point our standing of privilege, orders are Khalid. telling you chair to i am do. i'm not determining whether whether you, chair, you have you are under obligation to make sure i'm not that i'm not i'm not going to argue with you i'm not going to argue way. with you on this there is no there is no decision to challenge because the de the decision that i'm dealing with is on the question of privilege and i have i have told the committee that i'm taking this matter seriously and that i'm going to come back to the committee with a determination whether i think after i look at all of the evidence including you know some of the things that the, the accusations that have been made uh, I think it's I think it's fair and prudent on my part to do that, and so I don't think you have anything to challenge, Ms. Khalid. To be frank, so so I'm going to come back to the committee. That's that's my decision. Good, shut her down. She acts like such a child sometimes. Most yeah. of them do. Because she do when she doesn't get her way, she like jumps up and down and and you know, Whoa, you know what? like why why are you? You know the one getting so so animated. Like, if anything, Mr. Baines has has been the one acting like the most adult of the Liberal Party in this committee. How did that happen? So now that uh, now that we've uh, dealt with that, I'm just going to remind committee members that uh, we are back on committee business. Sure, I have uh, another point of order. Uh, go ahead uh, on your point of order, Ms. Khalid, please. Uh, thank you. And my point of order refers specifically to Chapter 13 of the House of Commons Procedure and Practice, Third Edition, on the Standing Order Number 18, on Standing Order 116, Sub 1. And it is in relation to actions that uh, Mr. Brock on this committee took against me uh, last week in putting out a, a public statement uh, that put myself in jeopardy. That uh, that created a lot of uh, a lot of negative ang angst towards me, and I believe that it violates the standing orders um, that have been laid out with respect to how um, parliamentarians are supposed to conduct themselves in the House and in the committee. Oh, that sounds really serious, Fox. Sounds really serious. Yeah, like I mean. Do you know what that tweet even said? Oh, it, it must be terrible. It must be. It must be, like, awful. It must be, like, the worst insult on the internet ever. The language. Okay, here's the tweet, everybody. Disrespect in Ethics Committee. The level of disrespect from at Ikra Khalid during committee is beyond words. Her back is literally turned towards committee members. Disgraceful. Oh, man, being called disgraceful is, like, the worst thing ever. 
and being called out for acting like a child in committee and turn like literally turning your back while you know all of the other committee members are are, are trying to conduct a meeting just in quote unquote protest and and you get called out for it so the problem isn't that he posted a tweet the problem is that you got called out for childish behavior and as a result of that you had canadians let you know it well guess what ikra khalid canadians are watching committee now we sure are tens of thousands of canadians are watching committee now and they're getting more informed as to what's going on and they don't like what they see this is not the first time this has been done but and i would hope that this is the last time that it is done and i i'm more than happy chair to to start reading to you uh yeah, miss khalid miss khalid uh, i'm just gonna i'm gonna stop you there because i don't i'm not sure whether it, it, was it related to committee business? Indeed it was, Chair. It was very much related to committee business. Where- <laughs> oh, yeah. Let's go back. <laughs> yeah. Look at all that committee business in there. Disrespect in the ethics committee. There's nothing in there it's, related to committee business. It's, it's conduct. It's a weak argument. It's conduct. It's because you were acting like a child in committee. Like you always do, Khalid. Why do you think so many Canadians are not happy with you? Like, take a guess. Or Mr. Brock Phillips. Point of order. Was it, was it in the meeting itself? Yes, it That's was. what I have Indeed. to be clear. Point of order. Uh, go ahead on your point of order, Mr. Kirk. So, so I believe that, uh, uh, I that, believe that, that it's I not a point of order. Do you hear how she talks over the other members? Everybody. She doesn't respect anybody in that room. Right. Right. Her, whatever she has to say is the most important thing and everybody else needs to stop talking and listen to her because she has something important to say and everybody else is just insignificant. So, That's the kind of vibe that I'm getting. Sounds like a Trudeau protege to me. That was raised, but rather, Mr. Chair, I would encourage you to follow the speaking list because that certainly sounds like a substantive item of debate. And, and if Ms. Khalid wants to move a motion accordingly, yeah. so she, Ms. Khalid, she is Ms. Khalid welcome to, but Mr. A, Barrett has the... She, she did bring up a point list. of order. So on, on your point of order, uh, Ms. Sure, Khalid... I, I haven't finished speaking to my point of order, if that's okay. They have what? I, would like, I have not finished speaking to my point of order. Okay, so... I'm, I would like I'm, to I'm, outline exactly what happened that helped violate the rules that I have pointed out, which is standing order number 18, standing order 1. If you feel that way, would you not want to raise a point of privilege then, similar to what Mr. Baines did? I am Baines raising did? a point of order because clearly, Chair, you're going to take a take a while to, to rule on any Stop points of privilege. That's, that's it, 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 sure. You know what? In that case, I will I be more than happy to do a point of privilege in that case then. Uh, okay. Um, so... Uh, we have another question of privilege being brought up by Ms. Khalid. Uh, so if you want to uh, go ahead, Ms. Khalid, on your point of privilege. This is the disdain that the Liberals have f- for literally our entire democracy. She's treating question of privilege as if it's just this, this game, this tool. Right, because a point of privilege is very serious. And to remind everyone again, when a MP raises a point of privilege, it's because someone has done something that impacts their ability to do their work for their constituents within the House of Commons, within committee, within Parliament. Right, and let's look at one of the valid points of uh, or questions of privilege from Michael Chong. So he voted... In a mo- in a in a vote in in Parliament, that uh, essentially chastised China for the genocide of a particular class of people over in China. As a result of that, the People's Republic of China harassed and threatened him and his family back in China. That is a question of privilege that's a valid violation of his privilege because what that does is that's another foreign nation trying to punish a member of parliament for how they voted trying to influence how they will vote in the future another question of privilege this one was raised by rachel thomas back on may 1st where she was ejected from the house despite saying that she had withdrawn her comments and then somehow hansard was was edited in a way that removed her comments, I withdraw. 
to make it seem like she didn't withdraw her comments and the speaker was justified in kicking her out. When she was kicked out, she wasn't able to vote on behalf of her constituents that day and she wasn't able to participate in parliament for her constituents that day. They had no representation. So that is a massive breach of privilege. This is not. Absolutely, Chair. Um, last week, uh, which was May 21st, I believe, uh, during committee, uh, Mr. Brock put out a tweet that said, uh, disrespect in ethics committee, exclamation mark, exclamation mark. The level of disrespect from Ikra Khalid during committee is beyond words. Her back is literally turns towards committee members disgraceful. Now, I, my understanding of, of the orders, the standing orders, and uh, the rules uh, for House procedure is that this tweet violates my privilege, Chair, and I will show you exactly how. So I will read to you some of the emails that I have received. I will talk to you about some of the point of order, Chair. I have received. No, please don't. Point of order, Chair. My privilege here. Oh, oh. Again, this is goes to the point that I was saying previously that Khalid thinks she is the most important person in that room. Yeah, I can interrupt everybody else, but no one can interrupt me. Point of order, Chair. uh, Just uh, bear with me here. I'm going to suspend for a minute. Okay, thank you. When we left off, I uh, appreciate the patience of everyone. Uh, we were on Ms. Khalid's question of privilege. I'm going, to, uh, I'm going to ask her to continue, but I'm also going to ask, similarly to what I asked of Mr. Baines, I want this uh, a question of privilege uh, should be as succinct as it needs to be in relation to the privileges of the member uh, being uh, violated. Now, I know, Ms. Khalid, that you mentioned uh, something about a Twitter post from last week uh, that uh, that occurred. Um, okay. I, uh, I'm not, in, I'm going to say this with respect, that I'm not interested in becoming the Twitter police. Nor should he be. That's not his job. His job is to chair the ethics committee, not to police what everybody is saying on Twitter. No, and honestly, this is a joke. This this is a complete mockery of the rules that Khalid is just taking to absurdity. And this is this is the problem when you have these types of people, right? These people are the types of people, these narcissists, that they play the victim and they will not be corrected. They would rather look ridiculous than be corrected. Everyone knows one of these people in their lives, right? Rather than say, okay, I humbly admit that I was wrong, and then you move on, and that actually shows some class and integrity. No, no, no. Just takes it right to the end. Like, you're you're trying to say that Brock commenting on how you conducted yourself in committee, which, from what he said, it was a fact, and then he put his opinion behind it, that is impeding your ability to be a parliamentarian. Get out of here. Okay. Sure, no, no. no Chair, I, I, you know what? If point? you have, if you, no, but let me explain. If you have, if you have an issue with uh, the actions of a member that you feel violated your privilege, then I'm asking you to state specifically where that violation occurred. Um, the the outside circumstances or the opinions of others does not matter uh, to this committee. What matters is whether uh, a member feels like their privileges have been violated. I'm also going to remind members as well, and I'm reminding you, Ms. Khalid, that anything that happens outside of this committee, whether it's a social media post or otherwise, is a matter that can be taken up by the Speaker of the House of Commons. Um, And we've seen in the past where uh, points of orders or questions of privileges have been raised in the House of Commons, and the Speaker has, in some circumstances, ruled on that. So um, any form of litigation related to this, any Twitter messages, because, look, look, frankly, you know, I'm going to speak frankly to the committee. I mean, we can go down a very deep rabbit hole on the issue of 
point of Twitter. order, Chair. I'm not sure why you're litigating this matter. I would like I'm to speak for what I have, where what, position, what I have experienced I'm, based on the uh, based on the actions right. of committee so members. So explain the actions. So I, That's I am the absolutely point I'm making, trying to do right? that, Chair. But so, you're. But I'm not. But I, I don't, Ms. Khalid. Respectfully, I don't want to be the Twitter police. I don't want to be a determining factor or the determinant of what's appropriate or what's not. We can do that in relation to a, what a member's action is, but I'm not interested in some numbered Twitter exactly feed of what, what they're I'm saying. That's exactly what I'm trying to so, speak to, Chair. That so, is exactly what I'm trying to So I'm going to allow you to continue to. Uh, with that expectation. If you, if you caught that just before this, Broussard suspended committee. We cut that all out um, to confer with the clerk. And no doubt what the clerk told him after she was talking about a tweet is that the tweet is, is out of bounds here. You, you can't bring a question of privilege related to a tweet into committee. The only thing that you can do in committee is bring a question of privilege as to, you know, an event that happened at committee. Otherwise, you can't bring that into committee. And CBC conveniently released this article earlier today. The clerk of the house said that the Commons workplace harassment policy governs the relationship between MPs and their staff but not between MPs themselves, whether inside or outside the House. Speaker Greg Fergus, who appeared at committee after the morning break, said, quote, It is a long-standing practice that the Speaker does not comment on statements made outside of the chamber, end quote. Quote, There have been instances of members posting comments regarding fellow members on social media that some would qualify as inappropriate or even harassment. While obviously a serious matter, it is not one that the speaker has jurisdiction over, end quote. So if the speaker doesn't have jurisdiction over comments made on Twitter, why would the chair? And the answer is, he doesn't. Chair, oh, all I want is an apology for putting my safety and security in jeopardy by a member of, uh, of this committee. That is all I am asking. And I can tell you how much hate I have received on social media. I can read it into the record, how many emails I have received, how many phone calls, people calling me and telling me that I'm so a Whoa, okay, we had to censor that for you guys so that YouTube wouldn't be all up in our business. Um, but I think based on the clues we've left, you can probably figure out what she said. That was unparliamentary. That was foul, man. Like vulgar, rude. Wait a minute. Didn't you know, like 10 minutes ago, I'm pretty sure she said she was reading from the parliamentary book that says that you're not allowed to use offensive language. And she just brought that into committee. Yeah, but Khalid seems like the kind of person to me that thinks rules apply to everybody else except for her. Like, I'm sorry, I have such a low opinion of her, and I know many of our viewers do. Just because of her conduct, it is just... It's, it's, it's juvenile. Well, and, and it's dripping with disrespect. The entitlement, it, it's out of this world. As a member feels that I turn my back to him, and I am just trying to look out for myself, yeah, Chair. Yeah, yeah. I am trying to look out Ms. for my Ms. safety. Khalid. No, Chair, I'm, you know, you have talked over me, I'm, and over me, and over me. and See, again, she's just going on, me, me, me. And I think she's so upset. I mean, I think when you put yourself in the public space, you have to expect that some people are going to say horrible things about you and be rude to you. Um, it's not okay, don't get me wrong, I'm not condoning that sort of behavior, but I think you have to go into it expecting that's what's going to happen. Well, when I was going to be uh, considering be, uh, you know, running for parliament, one of the first things that uh, some of the, the veterans said to me is, Make sure you have a real thick skin. Make sure that you can take people calling you really, really nasty things and let it roll off your back. If you can't do that, don't put yourself through that because it's going to happen. And here's the thing, Khalid. When your government bankrupts Canada, when your government skyrockets homelessness and has tent cities ev ev everywhere, when you have over two and a half million people visiting food banks when you have people that can't afford homes people that can't afford groceries people that can't afford heat you want people to tell you you're doing a wonderful job well and that's exactly it the indignation to her at least from what i can guess 
is that people are saying bad things about her. It's not all the horrible things that her and her party have done to Canadians. It's that people are talking bad about her. Right. And if you didn't act like a juvenile child in committee, you wouldn't have to worry about that, would you? All I am looking for is an apology, the, and I am looking for a deletion all. of that tweet. That is all I am asking for, Chair. So, so can I can I ask, why are we why are we utilizing committee time? If you have a problem with what Mr. Brock said, Chair, you can Mr. approach Chair. Mr. Respectfully, Mr. Brock. Chair. Because that would be an adult thing to do, Mr. Broussard. Right, and again, I think it goes to the fact that this is really bothering her, because. All I want is an apology and for Mr. Brock to delete the tweet. Yeah, then it's not a question of privilege then, is it? No, no, it's again, it, it's her ego. Yeah, it's this grandstanding that, 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 that she's doing. And what makes me <laughs> jovial in this case is she's not getting her way. And the, and the reason why she's getting even more upset is because she's not getting her way. She's literally having a temper tantrum in the middle of committee and everyone is like notice the the other liberals have just shut up at this point because i think they are just really embarrassed yeah this kind of behavior is extremely unbecoming of a member of parliament i don't believe that that is right. that is possible when when the the actions that are highlighted on social media during committee by members have severe consequences for somebody like myself. I'm sorry, Chair. I am not a terrorist. I am not a c I am not the hundred... Again, why do you need to repeat that word? Like, you know, that's the kind of word that when you're at the bar with your buddies and you're goofing around and you're telling silly jokes, that's fine. But that is not something that you say when you are a member of parliament representing the constituents of Mississauga Aaron Mills in committee. The only reason that she's saying that is to get a reaction. And it's disgraceful that that, like, you can say that in a completely different way. I don't think I should be called names. And then, you know what, people would take you a lot more seriously. Yeah, like this is going to end up on the parliamentary record. That is extremely, extremely inappropriate. And by the way, I looked. In the last 22 years, the C word has only been said one other time. And that was from somebody that was actually reading a report that had that in there. So they weren't they weren't saying it to be um, to be disrespectful, yeah. yeah, inflammatory. They were just reading a document. She has doubled the amount of times or actually tripled the amount of times that that word has appeared in the parliamentary record in one meeting. I agree with Mr. Brock. Disgraceful. Resilient point, things, of, point of order, I get chair. called on a daily point basis. Of order, chair. To hear because point of order, my chair. Colleagues just hang on a put hang on me a in that position, okay. chair. Point of order, Can you please stop cutting me off? Point of I'm order, just, chair. I, I am I'm asking trying, for some decor. Point of order, chair. I am trying very hard, chair. Point of order, chair. To get my to get point my of order, chair. Okay. across here to wait, raise wait, a no, very no, no. severe concern. Just hang on, Michael. I, I hear your point of order. So, Miss Khalid, I'm going to ask. Why do I? Why am I the only person in this room that keeps getting cut off? Point of order. Because you're the only one acting in a reprehensible manner and you spent the first half of this this meeting cutting everybody else off right again rules for thee but not for me sure i'm not he's got a point of order sure. i'm gonna well, go I to I'm, I'm gonna go to mr barrett on a point of order similarly to what i do with you when you raise a point of order okay and i'm gonna ask i'm gonna ask for the sake of the interpretation that we not cut each other off Okay. Mr. Barrett, on your point of order, please. Chair. Go ahead. The member is uh, citing uh, correspondence and calls that uh, are not from a member of this committee and that um, were not solicited or invited by a member of this committee. Uh, the, the Mr. Uh, and chair, Mr. Chair, no, Mr. Chair, no, uh, Mr. Chair, it is, it is, I hear, you, I hear your point, sir. From okay. So th this, I, this I, is I again gratuitous. This has, no, this has nothing to do, this has nothing no, to do no, with, chair, with I, my colleague. Please, this has nothing please, to do with Mr. my Barrett, colleague. Mr. Barrett, I, I am. This has nothing to do with my colleague. But I can't, I can't have screaming across the table. 
I can't have screaming across the table for the sake very, uh, for the sake statement to make. Well, Ch Chair, Mr. I Fisher and Ms. Khalid voices. both interrupted me while I was on a point of order. Okay, just hang on a sec. Okay, Mr. Uh, just hang on with your thoughts there, Mr. Barrett. Unreal. If you live in Ikra Khalid's writing, I feel sorry for you, man. And uh, you should show this video to, to other people that are still considering voting for her. Because but this is absolutely reprehensible. Like, most women I know don't behave like this past the age of about 16. Well, and for those wondering, this is Ikra Khalid's writing. This is uh, this is Mississauga Aaron Mills, and luckily the Conservatives have a slight edge, but it's not a sure thing. So, share this video of her conduct around with the people that you know, because it's disgraceful. It is disgraceful. Like, like she was the one interrupting everybody, and then when people interrupt her rightfully so because you're not supposed to talk over the chair she she gets all in a huff if you look at her colleague uh, parm baines he was speaking to his question of privilege point of order was brought up he, he he shut up because that's what you're supposed to do but no no not her okay so i i've heard the uh, i've heard both points of order uh, i've heard miss khalid's uh question of privilege mr chair point of order you did not hear miss khalid's point of privilege she did not get to speak to her point of privilege i think she, she was cut off okay. continuously by both the chair and members with points of order i think she made her point uh, she did not get a chance mr chair respectfully to make her point of dangerous dangerous incidents directed at that member because of another member in this committee's comments inviting those people no, no, okay so i am uh, actually i am not happen. happy with the way this that didn't happen going. i am adjourning the meeting yeah. And this is the problem, I suppose, with committee versus the House, is that in committee, the chair cannot eject a particular member that is misbehaving. They can either um, suspend the meeting until everybody decides to behave themselves, or they can adjourn the whole thing, which is what Mr. Broussard just did. Because what you didn't see is he actually suspended the meeting like three or four times, mostly to, to talk to the uh, to the clerk. But you would think that would be enough time for, you know, adults to calm down well and i love the bit at the end where that other liberal mp decided to say to oh, white knight it yeah yeah oh you know uh she's in danger or however he phrased it um words cannot hurt you words do not have magic powers they cannot hurt you unless you let them if you think that there is a serious threat which sometimes there is to mps um and and that's not appropriate let's just throw that out there right now yeah threats. do not threaten the mps yeah ever anyways as i was saying if there is a legitimate threat they can contact the sergeant at arms they can contact the parliamentary police they can contact law enforcement individuals to assess the situation and take action but somebody telling you you suck it's it, that's not life-threatening yeah you know? or, or calling you a name and and, and this is the thing this is the misinformation that trudeau always accuses the conservative of doing what Fisher and Khalid were saying is, oh, well, this tweet invited people to send her emails and to call her and to call her these names. Well, you know what? You should be able to contact whichever MP you want and express your displeasure. However, as we always say on this show, do not make threats. Do not name call. There are better ways to express your malcontent than by name calling and threatening people. And the best way is to vote the Rasses out. <laughs>